Okay guys, I'm gonna try to cover as many of the trades as I can that I haven't covered yet in this video. And we're gonna finish it off with, it's gonna go from you know an order of least craziest trade to most craziest trade. We already broke down the D'Angelo Russell trade. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below, but it's also just my previous video if you wanna check it out. So the first trade I wanna talk about is the Rockets traded Jordan Bell to the Grizzlies for Bruno Cabalco which means and this is pretty significant because it pretty much means the rockets are all in on figuring out whether mike d'antoni is going to be their coach next year and you have to bear in mind the reason why i'm saying this is there's not a single center on that roster anymore like they acquired jordan bell and i said okay they at least have one traditional center if they need a traditional center but they literally flipped him for another big man that could just hit threes bruno cabalco so the significance of this is there's no traditional centers on the rockets anymore not even jordan bell that they acquired in the robert covington trade they're all in on mike d'antoni's system and that makes sense because mike d'antoni said that he expects this to be his last year in houston there's been some rumblings about that kind of stuff lately so this is to pretty much determine whether his system works. The Rockets are going to be all in on him. And if it works, then probably they're going to bring him back. And if not, they're probably going to move on from the Mike D'Antoni era. But for the most part, it should be very exciting to watch. The Houston Rockets are like freaking mad scientists, bro. So very exciting stuff to see what's going on in Houston. Shabazz Napier is going to be on the move once again. He's going to go to the Washington Wizards as opposed to the Denver Nuggets. That, and that's very significant because the Washington Wizards are going to end up trading one of their point guards to the Los Angeles Clippers. And we'll get to that very soon. But the next trade I want to talk about, and this is definitely a very important trade. And dude, I want to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves. They knocked it out of the park this trade deadline. Yeah, they got rid of Andrew Wiggins, but they also made the best out of Gorgie Dang. They traded Gorgie Dang to the Memphis Grizzlies and got James Johnson in return. Now, I understand a lot of you guys are going to say, okay, Mike, what's the big deal about that? Well, James Johnson essentially fills in the role that Robert Covington once did for the Minnesota Timberwolves. He's a very, very versatile player. And at the same time, he's great on the defensive end, great on the offensive end. He could play the small forward or power forward position or even the small ball center position, depending on where Ryan Saunders wants to go with utilizing him. I think it's a great addition to the Wolves because again, he fills the role that Robert Covington once did. And I absolutely love the fact that they made the most out of Gorgie Dang's expiring contract in order to bring him in. So again, again, I don't know what you guys think. I think the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Miami Heat are the biggest winners of the trade deadline. Let me know your biggest winners of the NBA trade deadline in the comments section down below, by the way. Now, I want to take some time to talk about this, uh, these next two trades the most. And it's probably the reason why you clicked on this video. So before we get to that, guys, if you're new to the channel, you want the latest and greatest NBA news, make sure you take a moment to subscribe to the channel. And of course, once we get to 24,000 followers on Instagram, I'm going to be giving away a signed Kobe Bryant jersey, which, by the way, they're going for so much on eBay, but that's a different conversation. Let's get to this first trade, and that's Marcus Morris getting traded by the New York Knicks to the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, this had some drama behind it because the Los Angeles Lakers and Los Angeles Clippers were in essentially an arms race for Marcus Morris. And of course they are. Marcus Morris went from averaging 13 points per game last year to averaging 19 points per game for a terrible New York Knicks team this year. And what the Knicks wanted in return from the Los Angeles Lakers is something that makes sense for a team that's the New York in the New York Knicks' position. They wanted a young player that could contribute to their roster. And that young player was Kyle Kuzma. And there were some good talks going until the Los Angeles Lakers pretty much told the New York Knicks, yo, there's no freaking way that we're trading Kyle Kuzma. And that resulted in the New York Knicks engaging the Los Angeles Clippers. And this is what the trade is. And this is how the trade went down. The New York Knicks are going to send Marcus Morris to the Los Angeles Clippers for Mo Harkless. But that's not it. The Washington Wizards joined this trade. And they're going to be sending Isaiah Thomas to the Los Angeles Clippers as well. Jerome Robinson will join the Wizards. Mo Harkless and a 2020 first round pick would go to the Knicks. Great move by the Knicks. They get another great two-way player in Mo Harkless, which I think is very, very underrated. And they also get a first round pick, which is very important if you're a rebuilding team 
my props to the Knicks. This is, I believe this is Leon Rose's first move as the general manager of the Knicks, and it's a pretty decent one, in my opinion. Again, the New York Knicks are trying to take the Los Angeles Lakers approach in hiring a well-known agent as the general manager of their organization, and they're hoping that that works out. And if it worked out for the Lakers, maybe it'll work out for the Knicks. Let me know what you guys think, Knicks fans. Do you have faith in your new general manager? Well, I don't think he's a general manager. I think he's your new president of basketball operations. Or do you think it's going to be more of the same and you don't really like this trade? Now, the final trade that I want to get to, and I'm trying to do my best to remain unbiased because I could go on and on of how terrified I am of the Los Angeles Clippers as a Laker fan as a result of getting Marcus Morris. Like, they, they were already freaking deep and terrifying before, but now you add Marcus Morris and Isaiah Thomas to a team that has two of the best two-way players in the NBA with Patrick Beverly as well. You have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Patrick Beverly. You have Montrez Harrell. I'm just... Uh, uh, Lou Williams, um, bro, this team is this team is so freaking deep. I'm scared. Okay, as a Laker fan, I think the Clippers are way better than us. Like, and this is a Laker fan talking. I hate the Clippers, but they're definitely like in a playoff series. They are better than us. I'm scared. I am absolutely terrified of this team. All right, I know I said I'm not going to go on a tangent, but I couldn't help myself, man. I'm a basketball fan. I have to. Now, the final trade I want to talk about. And I think this is this trade is probably the most important for me to give you my analysis about, guys, is the Cavaliers acquiring Andre Drummond for the Pistons. Now, I already did a take on this, and I deleted it because I didn't understand this trade at first. And I was thinking, why on earth would the Cleveland Cavaliers acquire Andre Drummond from the Detroit Pistons. Well, my good buddy and fellow YouTuber Clay Allen actually took some time to explain this to me on Twitter. I literally tweeted this out and I said, I don't get why they would do this. Why would the Pistons give up Andre Drummond for nothing? And Clay Allen actually took some time to explain that Andre Drummond has a player option for this season. So he could decline this player option and walk if he really didn't want another year in Detroit. But the problem is, I don't think he'd get the contract that he's getting this year again. I don't think he would decline that player option. A $28 million play, uh, player option for Andre Drummond? You're not gonna turn down 28 million unless if you're pretty confident that you could get more somewhere else. But the Detroit Pistons didn't have that same confidence, so they said, okay, we don't wanna risk losing Andre Drummond for absolutely nothing. So essentially what they did was they traded their franchise player who's in the midst of his best year of his young career and then seriously he's averaging like 17 points and 16 rebounds bro like what else do you want from andre drummond they pretty much traded him and brought back a former familiar face in brandon knight they brought back they have john henson now and they got a second round pick they didn't even get a first round pick for him now of course andre drummond could end up walking but now the Cleveland Cavaliers have the opportunity to put Andre Drummond and Kevin Love next to each other and seeing how it's going to work out for them. I honestly think it's going to be very interesting to say the least. I think it's not really that much of an improvement of a situation for Andre Drummond. His team wasn't going to the playoffs before. I don't think his team's going to go to the playoffs after. However, I do like the combination of Kevin Love and Andre Drummond together way more than Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond. I feel like they could be a little bit more cohesive there than they were in Detroit. We also get to see what their head coach, John Line, is going to be able to do with them. And we get to see what happens when Colin Sexton gets some help. So that's a plus. Now, let me know in the comment section what you guys think about all these trades. Who do you think made the best trade and who do you think made the absolute worst trade? If you ask me, I feel like the at first I was going to give the Pistons an absolute F for the trade that they made. But you have to understand their backs are against the wall. They felt like Andre Drummond was going to leave them and I don't really blame him. He's been with the roster for eight years. They haven't really gotten anywhere. It's just been a consistent, never ending cycle of dysfunction and... He, if I was Andre Drummond, I would try to maximize my prime and try to go to a team that's competing for championships. I thought that the Celtics would try to make a trade for him. I feel like he's going to decline his player option and end up signing with like the Celtics in the offseason, if you ask me, because the Celtics need Drummond. Drummond would definitely contribute to the Celtics because he's a great defensive player and the Celtics do the best when they have a good defensive force on their team. But 
that's off season news. I'm not going to bring you off season news in February. We have four months until then. So let me know what you guys think. What was the best and worst trade in this year? And besides that, guys, I'm going to have a video coming out on my NFL channel microphone. So make sure you subscribe to that if you're an NFL fan. I'm your boy, The Flight Mike. I'll catch you guys in the next video, man.